Hey guys, how's it going? So in today's video, I want to talk about how much vitamin D3 supplementation is needed to raise your vitamin D serum level. Now, this is a question which a lot of you guys have been asking me. So I came across this interesting medical research paper where a study was performed on a whole bunch of people who had vitamin D deficiency and they were given 2000 IUs of vitamin D daily and their vitamin D serum level in their blood. It was measured for the next one month. So they monitored how these patients responded over a course course of one month and uh, based on that they were able to come up with some recommendations. So I think this paper is really important. This is a scientific study so no guesswork here because I can tell my story but that would just be an anecdote and I know a lot of you guys have uh, you know shared your personal experience in the comment section but we cannot make a conclusive argument based on just individual stories from people. So let's take a look at this research paper and try to understand what is the right dosage of vitamin D3 if you want to lift your vitamin D C level in your blood. So for this study, the volunteers that were selected, they were all healthy and they were aged between 18 and 75 years. So that means uh, you had a pretty good, uh, you know, range of uh, patients in this study. So the inclusion criteria entailed being an adult. So that was the first condition. And these adults did not uh, receive any vitamin D supplementation in the last six months. And they had a BMI in the range of 20 to 25 kilogram per meter square. So that's considered like a healthy range. Now these patients each received a sample of uh, vitamin D3 and the dose was 2000 IUs every day. So here are the results of the study. So at baseline, which is at the starting point, we had 95% of the participants, they had insufficient vitamin D levels. So insufficient level is uh, defined as anything less than 30 nanograms per milliliter. Now 29% were deficient, which means less than 20 nanograms per milliliter, which is even worse. And after 28 days, 62% still possessed insufficient concentration, but only 5% were deficient. So there was definitely an improvement. So here's a chart showing the progression of the vitamin D serum levels in these patients as the vitamin D dosage was given daily. So this is individual patients and you can see everybody is improving. Some showed more improvement like this green one went better and some of them showed less improvement but all of them definitely went up. So this shows couple of things. First is that everyone responds differently to the vitamin D dosage. Some people tend to react better than others and therefore this is very important that you talk to your doctor and figure out the right dosage that you need because one size does not fit all. Now here is another interesting graph where they are showing the vitamin D concentration in nanogram per milliliter. This is the vitamin D serum level and this is showing uh, the baseline which is uh, day zero then after one week after a couple of weeks and after 28 days. So as you can see the numbers are going up slowly but the rate at which the number is going up is not very high and this is something which even I experienced. Like I have mentioned before in my older videos that I had vitamin D deficiency. My level was around 12 nanogram per milliliter and when I was taking 1000 IUs of vitamin D3 daily it really did not make any dent. So then when I bumped it to 2000 IUs of vitamin D3 there was a slight improvement. I think after six Six months I pumped from 12 nanogram per milliliter to around 25 nanogram per milliliter but I was still under 30. So then I had to bump my uh, vitamin D3 dosage to 10,000 IUs per milliliter based on my second doctor's recommendation and after I did that I was able to raise my level to 50 nanograms per milliliter but interestingly when I dropped my dosage back from 10,000 to 2,000 I thought that you know now that my level was 50 nanogram per milliliter I didn't need that high dosage 2000 would be sufficient to maintain that level and in my case that was not the case my numbers started going down again and after six months when I had a subsequent blood test my vitamin D serum level had dropped to around 32 so from 50 it went all the way back to 32 so at that point uh, uh, after consulting with my doctor we decided that I need around 7000 IUs of vitamin D3 supplement daily to maintain a 50 nanogram per milliliter uh, you know blood serum level. So that means the recommendation from NIH and FDA where they say you should take 400 to 600 IUs of vitamin D3 daily that is definitely not true because if I take 400 to 600 IUs of vitamin D3 daily my vitamin D serum level will go back to under 20. 
So based on the results of this study, the authors are saying that uh, 2000 IUs of vitamin D3 supplementation daily is better than the recommended 800 IUs to maintain a level of 30. Now the interesting thing here is that 30 is the bare minimum to have healthy bone health. But if you want solid immune system, you should be targeting 50 nanograms per milliliter, which means even 2000 IU per day is not sufficient for most folks. And this is interesting. The authors do talk about COVID-19. So they are saying this is important in light of recent interest in the context of COVID-19 pandemic. Now we know that COVID-19 pandemic is much worse for folks whose vitamin D serum level is less than 20. I made a video and I have linked that video in the description below where actually I showed the data from an Israeli study which showed that folks who had vitamin D3 serum level less than 20, they were at a severe risk of hospitalization if they contracted the virus. So here is the conclusion of this study. So basically the authors are saying that there is ample evidence for wide prevalence of vitamin D deficiency. We know this already. Vitamin D deficiency is very prevalent in United States. It's prevalent in Canada, in European countries and even countries like India which are close to the equator and you would expect that people in India are getting a lot of sunshine so they should not be deficient in vitamin D but that's not the case. So vitamin D deficiency is a global pandemic. So authors are saying that there is is a strong support for the rationale for vitamin D supplementation and monitoring. This is also what my doctor told me. So she is actually testing my vitamin D serum level every six months. So I have been doing this for the last two years and this is the only way you can actually find out uh, if your uh, supplementation is working and if your levels are at a healthy you know 50 nanogram per milliliter or if they are below like in my case or you know in some cases it may go above and you might get vitamin D toxication. That's also very dangerous it's rare but it can happen so that's why you should have multiple blood tests now interestingly in this study authors are suggesting that some folks will need higher vitamin d3 dosage so 2000 is uh, not enough for certain folks to get to 30 and some folks may need uh, 4000 ius per day or even higher like in my case i'm taking 7000 ius and i know a lot of you guys have commented on my video and you guys have said that you are taking 10000 ius of vitamin d per day now this is the endocrine society's guideline and i find this very interesting so look at what they are recommending this is the recommended daily allowance and they are saying that you should be taking uh, you know from 400 to 800 ius per day depending on the age so for adults they are saying take over 600 to 800 ius per day and if you are deficient then you need to take 1500 to 2000 ius per day to get to the target of 30 nanograms per milliliter so these guidelines are very conservative honestly i don't understand why they are so conservative when it comes to the recommendation because there is ample evidence which now suggests that there is a global vitamin D deficiency. It's a problem affecting people all over the world. It's high time that, uh, you know, the endocrine society, the FDA, the NIH, they alter the guidelines, especially in the light of COVID-19. Because now we know that people who have low vitamin D serum level, they are susceptible to COVID-19. Now, if you want to learn more about vitamin D, check out the vitamin D playlist that I have put in the video description below. Also check out this video over here where I talk about top five vitamins that everyone should take, especially in the current situation when we are facing a pandemic and it's of utmost importance that our immune system is at, you know, the top performance. So go ahead and click that video and I will see you guys over there. Bye.